Hi, so I'm Graham McMillan. You're here today at Orchardton Farm, where I farm with my mum, my dad, and my wife. So I was brought up here on the farm. I went to the local primary school. I then went on to Douglas Stewart High School, where I took an interest in sciences. And also, being brought up on the farm, I enjoyed that side of things, so I pushed to go to the SEC in Edinburgh, where I then got my degree in agriculture. From a young age, we used to have silage contractors that used to come onto the farm, and when I was a, a child growing up, I found that quite exciting, I guess. And from there, my passion grew for machines and machinery and operating machinery. So from now on, we do our, all our basically all in-house combining, baling, all the kind of main arable operations, and some of our own silage ones too. So at Orchardton here, we are a mixed farming unit. So we have about 200 fat cattle that should be fattened, and um, we buy the stores. We also have about 400 bed and breakfast cattle, which are mainly in calf heifers or young stock. We then have some sheep, which we lamb, and we also have store lambs, which we fatten um, through the winter. On top of that, we also have an arable side of the farm, which is, consists of oilseed rape, barley, and wheat. When I was at college, I had an opportunity to go down um, one summer to the co-op farms, which was an arable unit. Um, down there, I learned how to grow different crops and see farming done in a different way, on a larger scale. Also on top of that, I then, once I'd graduated, I went into New Zealand where I decided to go and milk cows, um, which was completely different from what, I'm, what, I'm, what I've been used to here at Orchardton. I didn't come back wanting to milk cows, but it was certainly a, an experience that, I'll, um, that, that I fondly enjoyed and would recommend anyone else to do. So my grandfather came here in 1961 when my dad was four years old. So from there, it was a dairy farm to begin with. Um, and then about year 2002, we put the cows off and we then decided to be an arable and mixed farm. So I came into the farm after I left New Zealand in about 2010. Since I came back to the farm, I have brought a few changes in. Uh, I have taken stock of things I've learned over the past few years, like being down in South in Arable Farm. For example, I'm now growing oilseed rape, which is something we never grew before. Um, we've also kind of diversified in many respects and bringing bread and breakfast cattle into the farm just to give us an extra bit of cash flow and help just make more sense of things. So I would speak to my, my, my close neighbours, which I have a good relationship with, and also had a lot of help from the SEC Consulting in Stranraer. They've been a great help and just helped me guide me with different decisions that I've been unsure of and basically just making sure that it gave me the confidence to go ahead with the decisions that I've made. I suppose like anybody or any father or family member that's been looking after the farm for a long time, they are a bit sceptical at first, but it didn't take long for him to come to my way of thinking. I've been very fortunate that he's been open to the ideas. It's not been a challenge or a struggle to, to, to try different things. What do I enjoy about being a farmer? I enjoy the variety, I enjoy the challenge. I'll kick myself for saying this, I actually quite enjoy the pressure in some, in some regard. I think it's good for me. Um, and farming provides all of that and it gives me, it gives me everything I need. Um, to make me a better person. It makes me, um, in different environments, I feel confident because I know I can do it. Challenges I've encountered, weather has got to be the biggest one in the southwest of Scotland. Um, we have got a really short window to get, especially arable crops, to get them in, get them off. Everything seems to be, we must get everything done. Um, so we're always striving for efficiency in that regard to get things in when the weather's there because we just don't, when, once it starts raining in this part of the world it doesn't really stop so you only really get one chance. Future plans of the farm probably trying to strive for more efficiency especially on the arable side looking at maybe different ways of putting crops in the ground for example looking down the, the strip till or establish, zero till establishment methods that's kind of the short term kind of plans at the moment. I think we have a big responsibility for, for that, as in we look after the land for the future generations. So it's important that 
with the world with the global warming and, th and things like that, that we do our bit. Don't be scared to push yourself um, and, take, and take chances. It's, it, do, your, do your homework and talk to people. I think it's the biggest thing I would say to any young farmer. Just speak to, speak, to your, speak to people you trust, speak to neighbours, speak to people who have been there and done it. Um, and but bounce ideas off, off, off people. That's what I would say.